Welcome back to the Home of Crybaby Performance. We're continue on with our 160 build. Now we're gonna talk about the head. We have the rules open and uh, we're gonna measure up this head and see where there's anything to be gained. Okay, this nut is 10 millimeter, this one is 14. They're usually jammed together, so you have to unlock them. We already unlocked them. The intake and the exhaust are exactly the same. Okay, to get the uh, spring out, if you hold your finger on the valve, use your two fingers pops right out. That is the exhaust valve. And the intake valve, I'm holding my finger on there. These are only 12 pound springs. This has the um, valve seal on it. You cannot run the valve seal, so we'll be taking that off. The oh, that's the valve seal, that washer thing? It's got a rubber. It's got a rubber seal on it right here on the end. Oh, I see. I don't know why they don't let you run it. It, it keeps the oil from going into the engine um, from the cylinder head. But they say you can't run it. Who knows why. So now we're going to take a look at the... Um, <clears throat> the valves we've already pre-lapped these but with your but I'll step through it to show you how to do it okay see that fine gray area on the valve that's making a nice seal all the way around our valve seat on the head it wasn't that nice until I lapped it so I have this fine lapping compound and then I just put a little bit. You don't have to go crazy with the stuff. And then I put the valve in. And again, holding my finger on the top side, I have my tool, suction cup. And you can hear it actually um, grinding the material and then if I push up with my finger and go up and down because as soon as I take the pressure off from my finger it's sealing it has a nice seal we've already done it so I don't need to do a, all that much but if you just use a little bit of the lapping compound then you can save yourself on your brake clean and cleaning everything and there is the lapped valve. Okay. We want to do that for the intake and the exhaust. Okay. So now moving on, we're going to measure the thickness of this head. They say that we can cut this surface if we need to, to get to our minimum number which the minimum number is 2.908. Okay. So this is the down and dirty way to measure it. If you're not steady, the measurement is not gonna come out. You kinda gotta rock it back and forth and it is exactly 2.909. And that's all they're gonna check. They just wanna see if anybody milled it down. Now, let's say that you were three thousandths or four thousandths above that, and you're like, well, I'd really like to get down. It's really hard to cut two or three thousandths off on a mill. So I take sandpaper like this, and I put it on a flat, not a wood bench, but a flat steel plate, and then <clears throat> holding pressure on the head, I can move it back and forth on the sandpaper and get 
two, three, four thousandths off the head if that's what you need to do. <clears throat> okay, but you don't want to do that because they're going to measure. We're at the minimum number here, which means we're probably going to be at other minimum numbers. Now, the quick and dirty way to measure this uh, is I have this flat bar, and I'm going to put my caliper on the flat bar, and then I'm going to um, zero it. So now it's taking up that distance. Now, my first measurement is saying to the valve guide, which this is the valve, I mean, uh, not guide, to the seat. Yep. That is the valve seat right there. So, again, this isn't the most perfect way, but it's going to give us a number. And that number is 2.297. Uh, okay, their minimum is 287. Right, and then when we did it more precisely, we got 2.94. So, so we so we trimmed off like three thousandths doing it precisely with a tool like this that we zeroed out on the cylinder head like that. And then we moved it over to the guide and res uh, seat and measured it precisely. And it was, a, it was like two thousandths off from the caliper, but the caliper is down and dirty, quick and easy. Right, and don't forget we make that tool at inline tube. Okay, so now they want to know the valve guide. That's from the top of the surface to the top of the valve guide. So again, we're going to take our down and dirty measurement to our flat bar. And that one's uh, 970. The minimum is 1.015. So we have plenty of room there. And then the exhaust, the exhaust was closer, 1.23. Right. Okay, now if we want to take this measurement and do it a little more precise, we would have to do some math to calculate that 979 minus they're 1.015 and we came up with 43,000. So this, this guide is 43,000 this way in the hole. If we wanted to, we could tunk it down a little bit and get the 40,000. I don't really think it's worth the effort to mess up the valve guide on the, on the end, but you know, it's to get it to their exact measurement. You can move that valve guide down a little bit. Okay, what did we not talk about? I don't think we measure to the bottom of the bowl. Oh, the bottom of the port. Okay, so the bottom of the port is what they're calling right there at the bottom. Or this edge, or this edge right there. And again, with our flat bar and our caliper, I measure a lot of stuff. So I'm pretty accurate with it, and uh, 1.159. Yeah, and the minimum is 1.147. Right, so you can, it wouldn't even be worth your trouble to pound these guides out and machine that down another 3,000, so it's not gonna make that big of a difference. And you'd have to have a cutter made, and then they would know you were in there because the factory cutter marks, you can see them. And we did accurately measure it, and it came in a little more accurate than using um, the dial caliper. Okay, move on to the spark plug. Okay, so uh, you can run any automotive spark plug, and we like the brisk DR15ZC. Now in the book, it doesn't give a dimension for this little spot face anywhere, um, but it says no machining, grinding, sandblasting, and a list of other things that, whatever. We're gonna screw our spark plug in. 
We've talked about this before, the washer stock is about 80 thousandths. And when you screw the spark plug in and tighten it down over and over, it might get a little thinner. So we want to check that with our flat bar. And there's no way that that spark plug can hit the piston. Okay. But, but if it's you, awfully close. If it's you pretty close. Washer, if you didn't run that washer, that spark plug would touch that piston. So I don't advise not running the washer. Plus, if you don't run the washer, that's a race day DQ. But it's, but as you can see, the piston has a flat top, and if you get that to zero deck, to the top of that, like we measured, that spark plug's pretty close to that piston. There really isn't much to be gained there. And then how thick's the head gasket? The head gasket is eight thousandths so um, it's thick. So still pretty close. So it's still pretty close. Okay, the only other thing I want to say is that... Um, we originally thought that we might have to mill this head, so I unscrewed these uh, rocker arm studs. And when I put these back in, I'm gonna put red Loctite on those because I don't want those ever to move. Okay, so we showed you how to lap the valves. The factory valves um, are decent, but they really need to be lapped. And when we race quarter midgets, I like to lap the valves about every six races. So um, I would take the head off. This, I just want to say this head gasket is a steel shim head gasket. So it has a bump out around everything that it needs to seal. Okay, you will never get rid of that bump out no matter how many times you reuse this or not. That bump out's always going to be there. So I always reuse this gasket. I've reused it up to like five, six times. The other thing you can do is it has a fine coating on here and you can just take silver spray paint, spray a coat on there, spray a coat on that and it will reseal right back down. Um, I don't advise using the copper gasket sealer or any thicker gasket sealer. It just needs a very fine coat and spray paint will do that. Okay, that concludes the discussion on the quarter midget cylinder head on our 160. Stay tuned for more on our build.